next next up something I don't know next episode probably the least interesting episode was that last one thus far anyways yeah I can't skip this The one with the hostage was the best so far. I think if I replay any of the episodes to go different route to see how everything is, can can differ, for sure it would have to be that that episode at the very least. Bless me, Father Poe, for I have sinned. Again, Monroe? It's only been a week. I know. I just can't stop myself. What is it this time? I can't stop staring at myself in the mirror. I've been taking too many selfies. Well, they say pride cometh before a fall. Which is why I won't do it on a cliff. This isn't much of a confession, Monroe. Haven't you got something more scandalous? You haven't seen the selfies. Sounds like Monroe's beyond saving. But what have you been up to, August? It's time to come clean in. Confession booth. Now remember, callers, no last names, no strings attached, and no consequences. Just call in to confess and let us absolve you of all of your sins. It's cheaper than therapy. And almost as effective. <laughs> this isn't blasphemous, is it, Monroe? God, I hope not. Excellent. Oh, we have a caller on line one. Line one, you're through to the confession booth. Oh yeah, it's me. You're live on air, Line One. What's your name? Oh, uh, <clears throat> Beck. Welcome, Beck. Spill forth the burning secrets of your tormented soul. He means, what do you want to confess? I, um, crashed my boss's car. Oh, no. That's terrible. Into a person? Were you hurt? No, no, but the, uh, the car was, uh... <laughs> Totaled. It was a Rolls. Oh. Wow. I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, it's really bad. Well, how did it happen? Were you swerving to avoid something? Yeah, there was an animal in the road. It was uh, really hairy. Must have been uh, a bear or something else, because it was huge. A hairy bear. As big as a human. Honestly, maybe bigger. I remember because it was a full moon. Werewolf. When in doubt, pick the girl. What happened to the animal? I ran off. I don't think it was hurt, but I did hear howling. Howling? Yeah, like a like a wolf. Like um, ow. Well, that was terrible, obviously, but like a wolf. Well, that sounds mysterious, doesn't it, Poe? It does indeed. Thank you for your confession, Beck. Yes, thank you, Beck. It sounds like you're still traumatized by your experience, but I'm glad you weren't physically hurt. Father Poe says, You are forgiven. Amen. And we'll be back for more confessions after this message. Well, that was kind of strange, wasn't it, Poe? Yes, although I get the feeling he was angling for something. Really? Werewolves. Seemed genuine to me. What, are we going to do another investigation? You don't think... No, I'm being silly. You're not being silly, Alice. I suspect he was trying to make us think the same thing. He said it was a hairy animal. The size of a man. And the moon was full. You don't think there could be werewolves in August, do you? It does seem unlikely. 
Oh, you're not going to believe this, but there's a full moon tonight. Maybe we should leave early and check it out. Don't you have other plans? It's your birthday tomorrow. I wasn't planning on having an early night. Let me call Gwendolyn. His wife. Welcome back, listeners. This is Dark Nights with Poe. And Monroe. And we're in the confession booth. The confession booth. Line two, you're through to Father Poe. Bless me, Father Poe, for I have sinned. What is your name, child? Casper. And what dark anguish burns your mortal soul? Casper. He means, what would you like to confess? Nothing. There's actually something else I wanted to talk about. Okay. Off the air. Well, you'll have to wait um, a little while, Casper, until after the show. Well, I could wait until then, but that might not give you enough time. Time for what? To save yourself. Hmm. Time to save myself. I assume if I click this, we go into a pre-recorded thing. Or we could just say, screw you, the show must go on. Yeah. Screw your warnings. X that. Casper, I don't know how long you've been listening to our show, but if you're trying to play a game of cat and mouse, just know it's been done before. Much better. You talking about Frankie? That was brilliant. I was totally hooked. What is it you wanted to tell us, Casper? Don't go to Wolf Lane. We're not going to Wolf Lane. Yes, we are. Well, we might be. The werewolf, remember? Yes, you are. See? But you shouldn't. But we will. And why is that, Casper? Because it will be the last time anyone sees you. Why? I can't give details, but something bad will happen if you go to Wolf Lane tonight. <laughs> it's a date. You know, if you want us to take you seriously, perhaps elaborate on the something bad will happen bit. There's a billion other places you could go, and I'm just asking you to avoid one. But if you have a death wish, go to Wolf Lane. Sounds, sounds good to me. Which one takes me to Wolf Lane? I can either click on the, the cut or on him. I don't know what the choices will actually do. The one on the air is telling me to do or not do something. I'm going to cut, cut him off. Well, thank you, Casper. But I don't think you've quite grasped the concept of there. Hmm. Well, we're certainly putting the dark and dark nights tonight, August. Maybe we should stop taking calls. Nonsense, Munro. What would this show be without the heady mix of terror and titillation provided by our callers? Well, this radio host has been titillated enough for one night, which is good, because it's time for Betty Buys. <laughs> Sweet dreams, August. Thank you for listening. Yes, and remember, don't have... Nightmares. With Poe and Monroe. So what do you think? Let's go. It's Wolf Lane. Look on the girl. I think it's only a matter of time before Casper tries to kill us. He's just an attention seeker. So am I. I'm not trying to kill anyone, though. So what do you want to do about it? I don't know. He didn't really threaten us, so probably doesn't warrant getting the police involved. Are you sure? No. I just wish... I wish we could have one simple, uneventful, boring night. Starting tomorrow, today, we're werewolves. I don't wolves. think you'd like boring this morning. You're right. Which is why we're going werewolf hunting. Yeah. Casper didn't put you off? No. Telling me not to do something makes me want to do it twice as hard. Really? Well, definitely don't do the whistle swinger again. You like the whistle swinger, don't you? 
No. Even if it's twice as hard? Yeah, I agree, Spooky. We're not going to make it out of here if you keep talking like that. You really think we can see werewolves? It would be foolish to rule it out altogether. I know it's almost your birthday, but, well, a full moon waits for no man. Or werewoman. Exactly. I guess it could be romantic. You and me huddled in the car, looking at the stars. They say Wolf Lane's the best place in August for stargazing. Do they? There's hardly any light pollution. So it'll be dark. That must be why the werewolves like it. I can click on him, or I can click on her. Clicking on her. What about you know who? I've told her I'll be late. Just late? Well, we'll see. You go ahead. I need to check something. Who are you calling? Dominoes. Sorry, one minute. Okay, I'm going. Hi, it's Monroe. No, no, you look great. Totally convincing. Yeah. We'll oh, see you soon. she got Casper to call yeah. in. Hello? Or it's all right, Alice. Or not. You don't need to do that. It's not a hold up. You are pointing I a gun at them. This is for your own protection. Who are you? I'm Casper Light. I'm from the show. You just called into our radio show. Oh no. I must have come back again. Are you okay? No. This means I've already failed. A time traveler, maybe? What is it you want exactly? I work for a company called Coit Industries. They do experimental stuff. A scientist? No, I'm M&M. Like the candy. The rapper? Mishaps and malfunctions. We clean up messes. I'm here to save you. Save us from what? Disassembly. You have to stay away from Wolf Lane. We're not going to Wolf Lane. You told us not to when you called, so we're going straight home. Isn't that right, Monroe? Yeah. I'm so tired. Oh, mm. yeah. Betty Boop. See? There's no need for any of this. Please, put the gun down. For your own protection. As I point a gun at I'm you. I'm sorry. You have no idea what's at stake. Don't try it. It always ends badly. Rock, paper, scissors? So there are differences in Texas, hold them. Okay. Hmm. I'm gonna be playing rock paper scissors with someone that I suspect may be a time traveler. Let me woo you with my awesome scissors. But you didn't predict this. Need a quick save? Eh. How about you won't suspect me of doing it twice in a row? Back you go. My fate was sealed by. <laughs> Rock, paper, we? scissors match. Are you okay? We're in the sound booth at the studio. Why? I don't know. He's locked us in. I've tried the Because you suck already. at rock, paper, scissors. Is there another way out? Death? I'm assuming Casper 
will let us out when he's done with us. <sighs> Happy birthday to me. You said you wanted to try something different this year. I'm sorry I had to do that. It's to keep you safe. I work for a company called Coit Industries. Told us that. We specialize in speculative technology. I say we. The science team do the heavy lifting. I'm just m and Mishaps and malfunctions. It's my job to clean up the results. Normally, I don't intervene. Just let it happen, then clear up. But people will still be listening to you years from now. Because I've saved you. You're breaking the space-time continuum. So, the whole werewolves thing. I didn't want to wake up alone. I don't get it. Let's face it. Birthday or not, you'd have gone home to your wife after the show. I know you'd have stayed late and we'd have had some fun, but eventually you'd leave. Like you always do. Oh, he's married. Monroe. I just wanted someone to wake up with. To wish me happy birthday and give me a hug. But what's that got to do with Wolf Lane? Nothing. It doesn't matter now. Maybe if you get a time machine, you'll find out. Transdimensional machine. Okay, it's like this. Around midnight, you're on Wolf Lane. At the same time, an organization I can't name is testing Wait, industries. an experimental weapon. The test glitches, you get fried, and m and are called in for disposal. Because it's not your normal run-of-the-mill explosion. Tomorrow, the news spreads that you've vanished. You're never found. Time travel is Coit's most profitable service. The key is subtlety. You don't use it to kill Hitler. You use it to manipulate election results, justify wars, or in my when case, rock, paper, scissors. rescue two local radio hosts so you can keep listening to their show. You're welcome, by the way. Let us out! Let us out! No point yelling, Munro. It's soundproof in and out. So they couldn't hear him Fine. at any point then. Let's use our mind power to open the door. So that is how the world ends. I can't ends. hear you. You didn't hear it from me. I wish you'd say something. I'm just going to go. I'll leave it another minute just to be safe, though. Good luck, Poe and Monroe. He has no idea that they couldn't hear him this entire time. Did I just open that with my mind? Now she thinks she has a superpower. Try locking it again. Or we could just leave. So in the previous game we played, the the shape-shifting detective, there was some kind of thing that they were dealing with that they were calling the travelers. And got a little bit into like transdimensional uh, hopping. So I don't know if that's specifically time travel, but rather like hopping along, say, a five-dimensional timeline, and then they would possess or something along those lines. I don't think that's related to this. But in the question of fate, well, if the universe was four dimensions, then yes, but I like to believe in free will, which means we need five dimensions at least to explain that. In other words, you don't just hop back in time, you hop into possible different branches of causality. And then as, as, as you make observations, it collapses all the other possibilities, and you know which universe and timeline you're in at that slice. Anyways, click on the girl. Yes, best not to mess with telekinesis. Ladies first. Thanks, Poe. Let's hope Casper isn't out there. Why do Wait. you think we sent you out Sorry, first? Sorry, I forgot. 
there's still time to go to Wolf Lane if you'd like. You're driving. You not realize you were just held at gunpoint a moment ago? Yeah. Sounds good to me. You're alive on air, Line 1. What should we call you? Oh yeah, it's me. Whoa, hey! Hang up! Help! He's got a gun! Hang up! Back? Don't! I can't let you tell them where to go. Don't! Casper and Beck. Don't! Beck? We went back in time just Beck? now. I think. Next time on Dark Nights with Poe and Monroe. Welcome back to Radio August Treasure Hunt, sponsored by August Museum. Sponsored by Audible.com. Monroe only has one more capsule to plant. Don't worry, you'll not be hungry for much longer. Got a little glitchy there for a second. If you can fall out of love, we can fall out of here. She doesn't want you to get out. She wants to eat souls. <laughs> Dark Nights. With Poe and Monroe. I guess it's like a two-episoder thing. This one leads straight to the next. I chose Vanity over Lust. I let, let Monroe lead back. I cut Casper's call. I lost the rock, paper, scissors. I chose scissors first, and I chose to escape. As opposed to retest post telekinesis theory. Hmm. Like I don't even realize half these choices I'm making because it's not really all of it being that intuitive. <laughs>